Hi, welcome to the noise path. I have a dumpster fine item that I thought would be interesting for us to take a look at, an unusually AT&T branded item. So if I take it out of the box, you will see that it is an optical loss set meter. Essentially what this is, is it's equipped with a few different kinds of optical modules, allowing you to generate various wavelengths, 850, 875, 1300, and 1550 nanometer. And then you can output that through the fiber interface, and there is also an input, so you can measure the loss of that system. Of course, different systems are going to react differently depending on the wavelength, and that tells you something about the nature of that medium, the channel you're trying to measure. So there's obviously a module already in there, and you can eject that module and replace it with a different one. By the color of this, I suspect that this is the 875 nanometer module. Now underneath it over here is a compartment where you can keep additional modules. Unfortunately, one of them is missing, which is very sad, but there is another one in here, and this one is blue, this must be the 1300 nanometer one. It's obvious that there must be an 850 and a 1550 that comes in this form factor. There's also a whole bunch of optical converters for connecting to different kinds of fiber optics. Now this one, it doesn't work of course, but the reason is because of this. Yeah, that looks pretty bad. So I want to open it up, get rid of these batteries, and hopefully there's not much too much damage in here. And if you can turn it on and get it back to a working condition, we could not only measure some fiber, but also measure the wavelength and see how accurate and pure those signals are coming from those optical modules. Now, despite the heavy leak from the batteries, it cleaned up fairly well. The terminals are still intact. I spent some time getting rid of all the residue. There was not much damage to this PCB over here, but the cables were basically completely gone. So I replaced those and they look pretty good now. I haven't tested the unit yet. A whole bunch of potentiometers here intended for calibrating, of course, and they're all glued after they've been adjusted initially in factory, most likely. Everything is through hole. I don't know what the vintage is, but I would imagine that probably in the 90s. And then we have the two detector and generator over here, which are connected to the board. There's two PCBs in here stacked on top of each other. Nothing super interesting about it. It's basically regulations of the power at the LED and the detector or the laser module, whatever you put in there. We're going to hopefully turn it on and see it work. It does have some ground shielding on the buttons here that I taped out. You have to actually unsolder this to get it out. And there's one also at the bottom of the unit. So it, they clearly thought about this to shield it, most likely because the signal arriving at the detector is so weak, you're basically measuring very, very small amounts of current through some transient pins front and amplifier likely. So let's see if we can actually turn it on now. Okay, after the cleanup, fresh batteries inside, turning it on, and what do we get? Look at that, there's some life in it, that's great. Okay, so it's 875, let's select that. Okay, it's reading some power. It says LED blinking here. So this is LED based, of course, whatever module that was there. And we're reading some very, very small amount of power to nanowatt. If I block this, does it change? It does change. That's a really good sign. So the photo detector is definitely detecting something. These photo detectors are going to be broadband, so it will work across a really wide range of wavelengths. You just have to tell it which one so that you can apply the correction. We can test to see how accurate that is. But is there anything coming out of the LED? Let's see here. Let me turn it on. Oh, yeah, there is something. Look at that. That's cool. Okay, so the LED is definitely doing something. That is really nice. Yeah, of course, I cannot see it with the naked eye, but it is quite obvious to the camera as it is sensitive to that IR wavelength. So we're looking at this one. Now, there's two things we can do with this. First, we should measure to see if the photo detector is still accurate by putting a known amount of laser in there. And then we can look at the wavelength coming out of this. We can also look at the power coming out of it by doing a loop over there. In that situation, we can just do a loop. If the photo detector here is working and is accurate, we don't need to measure it any other way. So let's set that up. Now, a quick way to verify the performance of this unit is to connect it to another known detector so we can compare the measured power here. So we're going to use this lightweight multimeter. It has an indium gallium arsenide detector module inside of it, which is also very broad in its frequency and its wavelength measurement capability. And here it's set to 875 nanometer. And that is needed because you're accounting for the difference in the responsivity of that photo detector with a lookup table inside of the unit. Right now it's measuring its noise floor, which is about minus 75 dBm or so, because the unit is turned off. And all I'm doing is, I have a fiber connected from the output of this, directly to the input of that. Now when I turn this on, the LED will turn on and it will capture some power in this fiber. It's not the perfect fiber for this experiment, but it's good enough. We can see what power we're going to measure there. So let's go and turn it on. And what do we get? About minus 20.5 dBm. That's how much power is being captured and is being detected. Now what I can do is I can disconnect this fiber from here and connect it to the photo detector input and see if these guys would actually read the same value. That should be interesting. There we go. So minus 20.6, minus 20.7 dBm was the value. We're going to go over here, connect this, and look at that. That is pretty good. 
I would say that's pretty close to what the other unit was measuring. I think if I move the fiber a little bit, I can probably get closer. There you go. Yeah, this is not the greatest fiber. Yeah, so it's very, very accurate. It's surprising because this thing is, you know, probably 20, 30 years old. It's probably never been calibrated. But it is measuring almost the same value as the value that this was measuring. Now, with one test, we actually verified that the photo detector is essentially very, very accurate. What we don't know is if the LED is providing as much power as it should be, that should be in the data sheet, which I actually couldn't find. But nonetheless, this is a really nice verification. Now, the other thing I want to do is to measure this wavelength. Is this wavelength really correct? Is it sitting around 875? And that we can use a wavelength meter. And here's the other module, which is supposed to be a 1300 nanometer. So we can take the other one out and put this one in there and see how much optical power will come out of this one, because we can also measure it against this unit. And here's a loopback from the 1300 nanometer LED, and it is less, it's minus 26.5 dBm. But is it accurate? Well, we can disconnect it and connect it to this unit, which is now set to 1300 as well. Let's see if it will give us the same value or not. There we go. Look at that. Pretty good. Very close to the other one. So yeah, definitely is accurate. And we can use a spectrometer like this one to measure the spectrum content of the LED that's in here. Now this doesn't go to 1300 nanometers, so I'm putting the 875 nanometer LED back in here. Now because this is an LED and not a laser diode, we're going to expect a fairly wide line width from the signal coming out. It's not going to be a nice clean tone. LEDs are definitely much more broad in spectrum than lasers are, naturally. So let's go ahead and connect this up and look at the spectrum and see how good that LED is. Okay, here we go. Everything's connected. There's no signal right now because the instrument's turned off. Let's turn the instrument on. And here it is. Look at that. There's our LED spectrum. If I put a marker here, where are we sitting? Yeah, 868.9. Yeah, it's 870. It's exactly where it's supposed to be. But look at how wide this is. This is a really wide spectrum. This is what you would get from an LED. Very different from a laser, which would be almost a perfect impulse in this situation. Yeah, so the LED is at exactly the right wavelength. And you can see that this thing ends at 1200 nanometer and the color here indicates it's beyond the visible region at the end of the red that you could be able to see. The camera sees it, of course. But yeah, it's really consistent. The reason the power is changing is because I'm just holding the fiber. I don't have the correct attachment point for the fiber of the spectrometer. And there you go, a really quick video on this. People often ask me to make smaller videos on random curiosities that are on the lab, so let me know if you like this one. And if you happen to know where I can get this missing module over here, I would very much appreciate it. See you next time.